Reviewing this thing was inevitable, wasn't it? Every nerf reviewer has to go over the Strife at least once, and I feel like now's about time. So the Strife, a blaster that really doesn't need any introduction whatsoever. If you know what the nerf logo is, you probably have seen it before somewhere. This thing is probably the most popular blaster on the entire planet. And that's for a variety of reasons, which I will go over throughout the course of this video. Today I'm gonna explain why I really don't like this blaster. So yeah, let's just get started with the design. The design from this side is really good. It's very cool looking and at the same time super basic and simple in all the best ways possible. It emulates a pistol like the strong arm while giving you so much to do with that tiny space. And then you flip it over. No details, no paint, mainly just this green stripe. It's not even the same shape as the other side. Has bro! Gosh. And spoiler warning, that's literally the thing I hate about this blaster so much that it prevents me from liking playing with it at all. But don't worry, I'll get into more of that on my opinion. Let's just go over to the ergonomics. Yeah, this is a grip. It's the original Elite style grip, which means that it's pretty good. It's a little bit too big for this blaster, I think, but it works. The triggers, rev trigger, oh, that's a sexy rev trigger. Mag release, and that's a mid mag release. Main trigger, oh, that's a sexy main trigger, even though it has way too many locks on it. And another of this blaster selling points is the fact that most of the weight is right above the grip, so it feels pretty balanced if you want to use it as a pistol, which I never put any attachments on it, and again, you will see why later. So how does it work, and what does it do? Well, you put your magazine it's a pretty smooth mag insertion. You rev, semi-auto. It's got a very nice trigger pull that's really stood up over the years, even though this one in particular has a little bit more of a grittier trigger than the old ones did. I don't know. The trigger is, it's mid. And then putting the mag in and taking it out, yeah, it doesn't mag drop, but most of the time blasters don't. I don't really have any funny comments. This is a super boring blaster to talk about, so we're just going to the firing demo. Long rev up time. All right, that's the objective part done. Now time to complain. So let's say that you're like me and you like taking a blaster like this and actually using all the attachment points on it. So you wanna put your stock that came with the AccuTrooper on it. Seems pretty reasonable. That's a pretty good stock that Nerf made. So you put it on to the best of your ability. It doesn't wanna fit because you only have one hand to film this stupid nugget section of the review. There you go. You shove it on, you put it together, and there you go. Guess what? It's only being held on from one side, so it topples. Look at that. It goes right over the edge and isn't stable, making all of your shots veer to the left because the stupid shell sticks out on the right side and doesn't on the left side, which causes a tremendous imbalance. Oh, but what's that little barrel over there? Where did it come from? All right, yeah, we can use the barrel attachment on the front. Don't you worry about it. It has the exact same problem. And I literally get the most inconsistent feeding in the world even using this barrel because there's nothing to hold it up on the left side. What were they thinking? It seems like just an OCD problem that I need to get over in order to like the blaster, but it actually inhibits my ability to use the stock or the barrel and still get the same experience out of it. You basically have rendered both of these attachment points valueless unless you do something to the shell in order to create more support on the left side for both of them. How did this happen? What were they thinking? Why did they do this? Like, this is such an easy problem to fix. Just make the shell identical on the left and right sides. Even if you have to make a fake battery tray that's just a plastic piece that's solid plastic or hollow plastic, just do that, do anything, don't do this, this is stupid. I think that's where the Phoenix and the Storm Charge actually have an upper hand over this thing. Because no matter what you do to it, unless you physically modify the shell to make it even on both sides, the Strife is super obnoxious to put any attachments on and it really makes me dislike using it. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, I really don't like this blaster. I feel like this is a blaster that was a pretty big deal and was pretty good at the time, but it just has not stood up over the test of time and has gotten substantially worse because of that one single stupid problem that it has. It's just that one problem. I have no other complaints with the blaster. The rest of the blaster is fine. It's just the fact that it's so asymmetrical that it makes doing anything with it a titanic pain in the ass. And in my personal opinion, if you like it in its pistol form or you want to modify it, yeah, sure, get the stripe, it's fine. But if you want to leave it stock and you plan on using any of the attachment points that aren't just the rails, get one of these instead.
please. It'll do you good. So yeah, I'll leave a link for one of these in the description below. Subscribe if you're new, blah, blah, blah. Just thanks for watching. <laughs>